mutations are usually harmful. That is to say that they generally cause a mutant to reproduce less. Selection, on the other hand, is adaptive. Selection at a particular locus leads to individuals that reproduce on average more. Eventually, if selection on one hand and a mutation on the other are happening at the same locus, these two forces should balance each other out. Let's have a look quantitatively and see how this works. So, our setup involves a wild type, big A uh, allele, and a mutant, harmful, little a allele. Their population wide frequencies we will continue to write as P and Q, respectively. And if little a is completely recessive, then the fitnesses of these genotypes, big A, big A, is 1. The fitness of the heterozygote is also 1. And the fitness of the a homozygous mutant is 1 minus some selection coefficient s, right? Remember um, that when we're talking about fitness, s is the degree to which this particular genotype is disfavored. And so if little a um, is like embryonic lethal, then s will be 1, but generally speaking, s is between 0 and 1. And because of Hardy-Weinberg, the probability or the frequency that we will see this genotype is Q squared. And so each generation, the proportion of alleles, the rate of elimination, er, let's do this over here, the rate of elimination of little a, little a alleles due to selection is s times q squared. However, remember at the same time, big A alleles are mutating to little a alleles at a rate of mu. And so, at equal, at, um, and so, so uh, little a alleles are being eliminated at this rate but they're being created at this rate and at equilibrium these two rates must be equal. And so we can do a little bit of rearranging and we find that Q hat, which is the equilibrium frequency of the mutant allele, is the square root of mu over s. And this is all well and good if this little a allele is completely recessive. What happens if it's only partially recessive? Well, in a partially recessive situation, then the fitness of big A big A is still 1. The fitness of little a little a is still 1 minus s, but the heterozygote will have some loss of fitness, but not as much as the homozygous recessive. And so we say that it's recessive, I mean it's fitness, the heterozygote uh, fitness is 1 minus h s, right? And we call h the degree of dominance. And so H is a measure of how dominant this harmful mutated allele is. And so if H is zero in this situation, right, the mutation is completely recessive. 
it doesn't show up at all in the heterozygote. But if H is 1, then that harmful allele is completely dominant. Um, and in the real world, most of these alleles that show partial dominance, H is much, much less than 0 0.5, right? And so these alleles are a little bit penetrant, a little bit dominant, but not a whole lot. So now let's see how this plays out at a population level. So remember from our discussion of mutations that if Q is small, then most of these recessive little a alleles are going to show up in heterozygotes, so much so that we are completely going to ignore the homozygous uh, genotype entirely. And so the selection coefficient against the heterozygotes is H times S. Um, right, the selection coefficient against the heterozygotes is H times S. And so that's how much at a disadvantage they are relative to the homozygotes in their ability to reproduce. And so each generation the proportion of alleles that are lost to selection is 2 times P times Q, right? Recall from Hardy-Weinberg, this is the uh, population frequency of the heterozygote times HS, right? This is the, select the selective disadvantage that, um, that uh, genotype is under times one-half. Why are we adding the one-half here? Remember that we are looking at lost alleles, right? And so when a heterozygote fails to reproduce, we aren't losing two alleles, right? We're two of the, um, two of the mutant alleles. We're only losing one of them. And so this is the rate that mutant alleles are lost due to selection, but they're still being created by mutation at a rate of mu. At equilibrium, these rates are the same. However, um, right, these, these reads, uh, at equilibrium, these reads, rates are the same. And because this harmful allele is very rare, we can actually estimate P as 1, right? P is so close to 1 that we're just going to go ahead and call it 1. And so if you do a little bit of algebra, then you end up with Q hat, right? So the proportion of um, mutant alleles at equilibrium is equal to mu over H times S. And so compare this situation where, um, uh, where uh, right, compare this situation to this one, right? In this situation, the heterozygote um, has some selection against them. And in this situation, it's only the homozygote mutant that is being selected against. And see how there is no square root here. Because most of these recessive alleles are present in the heterozygote, even a little bit of selection against that heterozygote can dramatically decrease the frequency of those mutant alleles. So through our entire discussion around mutations and selections, We've assumed that this homozygote wild, um, the homozygote wild type genotype is the most fit, that mutations are always deleterious. What if that's not the case? Occasionally, it's actually the heterozygote that will end up being superior. And that's our last topic.